but it's something that is in this sculpture three different elements again made out of that shiny metal out of aluminum that they can be stacked in different forms and varieties so that no two signs have to look exactly the same but they can be variable and have a different degree of, of creative and visual interest throughout the district now in some cases we're not going to want to put the sculpture the sculpture itself is a striking element but what's most important is to have the signage for the district and then to be able to bring that signage back to the local municipal level as well so in addition to the Aerotropolis signage on the vertical pylon, the base of every sculpture will also have the municipality in which the sculpture is located, whether that is the city of South Fulton, or East Point, or College Park, or Hapeville, to make sure that we're recognizing not just the district, but the individual cities that make up the district as well. In some cases, that vertical pylon is not going to work, so we have a horizontal signage as well that spells out Aerotropolis with the raised lettering. That can also be done with the sculpture, as shown in this image, or without the sculpture. And then as we move from the major interstates, where these scales are going to have to be pretty large for cars that, in most cases, are moving by at 50 to 65 miles an hour, as you get off of the interstate and into those business districts, then the signage is scaled back down to a car at pedestrian level, still with the vertical pylon and with the sculptural element, but again, with every concrete base calling out the name of the city and the jurisdiction in which the signage is located in. Now again, at this point, this is a concept plan. Uh, it's a design that has been approved by the committee of staff members that we're working on it, but we're bringing it to the cities for input. And uh, with the input of the cities, what we expect to do this fall is further refine the design, the exact locations for which the signage will be located, and then the cost to implement them and at that point, the CID working with the Aerotropolis Alliance will come back to discussion with staff and the cities uh, for the actual funding to implement some of the signage. But the CID is looking to manage all of the design process to implement them in partnership with the Alliance and will likely want to come back and partner with the cities for signs that are specifically located within your jurisdiction. So that's the, the concept plan at this point and the plan for moving forward. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, as you look toward Gateway Town, mm -hmm. uh, how would that impact? Well, I don't think it would be a negative. It, it would probably be an add-on, depending on what level of input we would have on the signage. So uh, the areas that the, and I think the Aerotropolis folks have kind of highlighted that they haven't made any final decisions, but I think as the council develops or provides their input, it should just take into consideration the key areas that you would like gateway signs. I think you highlighted Old National, Cascade, you know, other key areas that you would like to see uh, gateway signs. As you have an opportunity to provide input here, then it's just sharing that information. And I think the folks at Aerotropolis have shown and, and said that they're more than willing to kind of work with us and make sure those things are lined. How much am I seeing with Aerotropolis? Well, in this piece, it's a very small amount, right? It's a fairly small part. Yeah. There's a little bit along Camp Creek Parkway, uh, South Fulton Parkway, and uh, Highway 29 Roosevelt. 29. Okay. Yeah. My next question is, um, you showed me the Aerotropolis and the municipality. I think that's back to <laughs> I really do. I really think that the municipality should be highlighted here in the bottom line there. You can put Aerotropolis. Uh, I don't have anything against the Aerotropolis except the fact you don't have nothing I say. Right? That, that's problematic for me. For me. Uh, and I'm sure that all of us up here at some point have been wanting to be a part of the Aerotropolis movement. But uh, I don't want it to. I don't want to overwhelm the city. It's probably what I'm saying. I mean, we are soft working in, in, in concert with Aerotropolis. Not Aerotropolis in concert with soft working. You know, so I, I would take that back as a consideration. Let me get my name right here. I uh, saw Ms. Gums, and then Mr. Khalid, and then Mr. Khalid. So, 
can you, uh, thank you, can you share a little bit about how your committee is made up? Like, what's the makeup of the committee? You said staff is only staff? Or? It, it was mostly staff members, yes, ma'am. So it included uh, staff from the CID and the Alliance, as well as staff members from each of the cities. So Ms. Reed was part of the, the committee um, who was helping lend some perspective from the city of South Fulton, but it included members from each of the cities. Yes, uh, Mary, I was, I was actually going to say that no part of national is of our, there's not really any significant part of our city that is in there um, Even those, even the areas that you mentioned, we don't really have any development there. I do also agree with you, though, um, people are still learning about South Fulton when they start seeing your chocolate signs. I just think that we are going to have to do um, some serious public uh, education and I, Want us to get out of these before too late because I'm sure that the girl chocolates will have to use that. They'll get that, so I think we're going to have to compete in terms of, of marketing and what we're spending on marketing with this, this other new city. Mm -hmm. Okay, please go. Um, two questions Why is it City of South Fulton is not, or City of South Fulton is a part of the air traffic. Is it because we were unincorporated and it wasn't even much focus? Do you have that answer? Okay. Hey, um, so to make sure I understand the question, why is the City of South Fulton not more part of the air travel? Right. Uh, currently, I mean, the, the nexus of it when it formed was the East Point College Park area. There's nothing that stops us from talking to property owners in the South Fulton area. Uh, the process for incorporation into the air travel is kind of this complicated calculation of property value and number of owners, et cetera. But we are actively pursuing property owners along Buffington Road, Naturally Fresh. Um, I know the city boundaries get a little complicated around there, but uh, down on National as well, we're working with Association, so we certainly intend to include more properties within the Aerotropolis very soon. The CID is only commercial, but and yeah, and, um, the CID is only commercial properties, as, as Eric pointed out. And the part of 29 is that near the Buffington Road area, uh, or where the Atlanta, I mean, the uh, job corps is coming. Is that I guess I'm trying to get up because when you start getting close to the city of South Fulton borders, um, it is going to cause confusion um, because uh, residents are going to say, what is air traffic? What does that mean? And also, I want to make sure that whatever gateway sign you're placing that, are close, that is close to our borders is going to be in alignment with our gateway signs that we are eventually seeking to uh, put up. So I would like to make sure that you all have more conversations with our city um, to make sure that um, we are in alignment with design. We haven't decided what our gateway signs are going to be. And so we need to make sure that we are discussing, especially that one of 29, because that road, it uh, crosses Union City, it crosses South Fulton, it crosses College Park. Um, it's a lot going on. And half of the road is in District 5, and half of the road is in District 3. Yeah, we're, we're certainly uh, aware of the complexity of the borders around there, but uh, your, your comment about you know, coordinating to make sure we're on the same page is definitely... So uh, when you all have those meetings before you place the sign of 29, can you please include Councilwoman Jackson and me in discussions? Absolutely. Thank we'll, make, we'll make every effort to coordinate with elected officials as well as the citizens in the area. Okay, thank you all so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Next item is a special event permit presentation made by Shayla Reed, Interim Director of Community and Regulatory Affairs. Level on some things that we will need your, um, I guess, way 
weigh in on. We, okay, sorry about that. So we're gonna have a discussion tonight really quickly on current permit process, uh, what we're seeing as a proposed process, and then also identifying what's next to allow for us to kind of have a better flow uh, when it comes to the administrative side of things. So the zoning resolution and the parks and recs resolutions uh, both define special events differently. Of course, the zoning resolution identifies it as anything that allows the public to come out um, as spectators for any special style of event. Uh, parks is saying anything that's used in parks facilities considered to be a special event um, should, it be ha should it have some type of significant effect on the use of the parks. So we just kind of need to tighten up some things and I'll go into detail to show you exactly what. So when is a special event permit needed? This is very important because we're finding at the administrative level that events are happening without permits. Uh, we must ensure that these permits are being issued because the last thing we will want to do is, is to make sure that public safety is not being considered. Um, the purpose of the permits is to go through a process where public safety as well as code um, make, uh, ensures that certain things are in place prior to the event taking place. So this definitely protects the public. Um, an administrative permit is defined as anything that's 250 individuals or less. And then anything that's considered a use permit is anything 250 or more. So let me give you an idea of what a 250 or less would be. Something that's considered like a block party. That would be something that's an administrative permit. A use permit would be something that's a concert or something that's like a fall festival that could have a large scale of individuals that will come in. And I'll tell you exactly how those are being processed soon. And then parks, again, anything that necessarily is the parks will have a parks permit. So they don't define it based on the type of or the number of people that will come. They define on the use of their parks. So again, there is an administrative permit um, that starts in community and regulatory affairs now. Um, it will be moving over to Destination South Fulton in the permitting process. Uh, again, the applicant comes in the door, we give them the application, it's processed there, and it actually is permitted and allowed through that department. But then the use permit is prepared um, in the same department, but it's carried over to council for council's consideration and deciding upon. And then Parks and Recs, of course, is received at Parks and Recs process through Parks and Recs, and issued through Parks and Recs. So again, the process, as I mentioned, the administrative special event permit is administratively given. Um, what happens is an applicant comes in the door with the application, we process it through the permitting process, uh, we ensure that certain pro um, projects such as public safety, code enforcement, uh, maybe even the health department, various different departments are reviewing this application to ensure that it's in compliance. And then at the administrative level, that director will issue that administrative special event permit. The use permit, same thing happens, but the only thing different is it has to come before you as a board for that decision to be made. Um, so any concerts and large festivals should be approved by council. Um, that should be something that you should always make sure it is processed and handled here with you all before we allow the public to come in and not have public safety as our main concern. And then lastly, as I mentioned, Parks and Recs is the admin process very similar to the Administrative Special Event Permit above, meaning it starts in the Office of Parks, it's issued through Parks, so it doesn't necessarily, well, it doesn't touch our department and permitting, which is where the concern lies with us today. So we have a concern mainly because there's three different permits, three different, well, two different processes. The first one, as I mentioned, the admin permit and the special event, excuse me, the admin and the use permit, they all are handled in the same <coughs> office with the same process. But when it comes to parks and recs, parks and recs, it doesn't come to the permitting office, it goes directly to parks. And so uh, we're wanting to make it so that the process is flowing to where the permitting office is receiving all, all permits, whether it be through parks and recs, or special events for um, use permits or um, administrative permits. And then we've been in communication with legal because legal is preparing language that will gather um, information that will allow for our process to have deposits, insurance policies, um, plan requirements, etc. So right now in the zoning ordinance, that does not mention any of those things. So we're very happy to see where the parks ordinance allows for that because we're trying to also have that in our zoning code. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Um, 
One, this is sort of a, a, a comment on the question, but I wish that we may, um, as I wish as we're having this conversation about public events, mm -hmm. we also should think about how we do city events. And, and then maybe that our city events should follow the same sort of process because all the departments have to coordinate, they need plans and different things like that. So I wonder if, as you all are developing this for um, the rest of these events, if you could think about city-sponsored events as well. Okay. Um, and then my, the second part of that is, I wonder how we are going to publicize this. It would be really easy through the permits department to send like a mail or something out to everyone that applies for a permit. But I know that many of the people who have events at least in my district, but I think throughout the city are churches and nonprofits, which may not be in the zoning or regulatory affairs uh, database. And so one I want to ask legally, are churches bound by these same things or is there some special rule governing churches? And then two, how will we get this out to churches and nonprofits? And I'm thinking particularly because Halloween is coming up and lots of churches do these big trunk or treat things and I wouldn't want I wouldn't want SFPD showing up and shutting down the trunk or treat because you know some of the other
opportunity to say when they're not in it. Um, PD does a thorough review of the applications when they come through, so we want to make sure that all apps have that process. Okay. I'm just concerned about the tracking mechanism. So, like, if, for instance, we run into a, a party that's happening or, you know, a special event and we need to call, and there's, like, you have to go through so many paperwork to find out. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, okay. Okay. So here's the thing, when the application comes in the door, the second it comes into the door, once the permitting department is taking in all the fees and everything is in, everything is passed out to the relative departments. Your police chief will literally have to sign off on all the events before they're, they're being had in this process. So when there's a call, an event, he'll be able to notify his team saying that there's an event, this event has or does not have a permit. So there's a tracking mechanism because all department heads will be able to review that file. Okay. Electronically? Yes, we send it out um, via email to all department heads where we do a review process. We even meet after everyone has received it. We have a meeting on these events where we sit down and go over them. And I can yield to Councilman Yeah, I was just, I was going to say, I mean, the outburst, but um, when you have <coughs> your event permitted, they actually give a copy of the permit, like a laminated copy to the person. So an officer should just be able to ask where is your permit and they should be able to produce it. If they can't produce it, then I won't be on it. <laughs> well, that could be a part of what we're talking about. This is me. So they upon asking if they have the data yeah. for people to see. Okay, uh, I have this. Uh, as well as next. <coughs>
doesn't mean, of course, you can wave your own fees, but it doesn't mean you have to, you know, it just makes sure PD's aware, fire's aware, just make sure that all that's involved are aware of the event taking place. It's just safe that way. Okay. Um, and lastly, um, I just don't want, I just want to make sure that we are streamlining this process. I want to make sure we're going through the permitting process, but I want to make sure we're streamlining it as much as possible because what I don't want to get labeled as is a city that's complicated to do business, um, like some of the other cities. And um, I would like, if possible, this to go in effect um, probably um, in December uh, because we have people who already have event scheduled. And so to require them to go back and uh, go through processes like this when there's going to be an education piece to it, I think will be very unfair. So if you have people in the city using our facilities or people who are having um, events, I don't think we should um, mandate them to go through this process until maybe December, as of December, to give us enough time to uh, give communication. Because there are events planned. There are trunk and treats. There are Halloween events planned. And um, I definitely don't want to interrupt that. Especially when there are um, good community events that have been working well before we put it in a new process. Okay, Ms. Christmas, we bring right in front of me this ad that uh, I don't see where this speaks at all to the possibility of a waiver of fee. And if I really want to waive a fee, what does that mean? What do I have to do? I mean, I'm sure legal can weigh in to give. I'm not, they don't have to now. Okay. As we go, we go back to blood. Okay. I mean, when you come in and say, oh, well, I think you should wait. Can you weigh that thing? Then there's a process. I'm pretty sure Right. Same yeah. thing. Well, same thing. We can add that in the code. If that's exactly right. right. That's what I mean. Okay. Uh, Ms. Gilead. Hello. I just, um, I don't understand why permit is going through economic development. I know it's budgeted that way, but it really doesn't make sense to me. And that's a, that's a little bit different issue. Well, I, I, mean, I think we presented it, and when the budget was passed, they moved. I can't hear. So I, I think we presented it through the budget process, and so when the budget process we provided our explanation is on when the budget was approved it moved. It is the same process as it was. I think the one thing that it does is it gives you a one stop shop for all your business activities, which is the same, you know, explanation that we provided before. I think the question that came from Miss Willis or uh, Dr. Rao kind of illuminates it that is do they have to deal with a bunch of different departments? No. They would deal with the representative from permits, and then internally, all of those inner workings happen, but their account manager is their account manager. And so that is actually how we have coordinated it through the case study. We showed you with the Home Dealers Association and many of the others. So we started to put this process in place so far and have had some strong results, and we hope to, to build on that. Did that, Ms. I don't have any comment. It still doesn't make sense to me. Okay, man. All right. Are you finished, Skill Yard? Do you have anything else? Yes. Okay. I'm finished. Okay. Thank you, man. Mr. Baker? My comment uh, was actually a comment that would have fit earlier with Councilman Khalid was talking about the process of possibly asking someone to see something physically uh, for permitting. I just wanted to add, uh, if it's possible, speak with Director Phillips in re reference to that. He has some new <coughs> ideas regarding possible stakes uh, and other things like that that could acknowledge, <coughs> identify that uh, that the uh, event is all, all already permitted. Correct. So when you're having a, a building permit, for example, there's nothing different between a building permit and a special event permit. They're all necessarily paperwork. So what happens is if you're going out to a construction site and you don't have your permit, we can stop you. It's the same thing for a special event permit, which means when you're issued a special event permit, if you don't have it, you can be stopped. So that's the process that's already in place. Well, may I add 
I think what Mr. Lincoln is talking about, though, is kind of back to physically, is if I'm having something in the park at the pavilion, we may provide a, a glass container on, on the wall that the person will slide the permit in, all right, and then take it out. Or if you're having a, or something at, at the front house, <coughs> you, can, you, can, you can put it on a bulletin board or whatever it is. And that's to remove it after the event is gone. And I, I concur in that really. And then that's when you don't have to even have any you know, conversation with the police or anybody else who may want to come in and check on We're looking for a point person. Right. We don't do that now. We do. And we will fire when they have a permit. To put it up. Okay. All right. That was my last speaker. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. I don't believe you have any other presentations for this meeting. I make a motion to go into executive sessions for legal personnel and real estate and real estate. Second. Proper move to second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Vote opposed? Vote opposed? That's exactly what we're going to do.